What World of Warcraft teaches us about investing in basically anything, but also Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, I know this is weird. We are on a finance channel, or well, a, a Yu-Gi-Oh finance channel, I guess. And now suddenly this dude is gonna talk about World of Warcraft. Well, too bad if you don't like it. Click it off, I don't even care. But I have been an avid World of Warcraft player since, I wanna say Wattle? Yeah, Wrath of the Lich King. I started playing in I think 3.1, maybe 3.2. Great game, I think most people tried at some point. It's an MMORPG. So it's an entirely different world built virtually and you can essentially play it and, and play it in many ways. It's not something like Mario where you have one way to play the game. Have professions, you can be a raider, you can play against others, you can collect pets, you can collect mounts to ride on. It's a big world. And so the interesting thing is, because it's a big world comprised of actual people, there's actual psychology and market dynamics also at play in that world organically. And that is mind blowing. Even though the creators of the game did not force you into certain things, certain market dynamics organically started building themselves. You had what's called the auction house, where you can buy and sell materials and items and people can bid. Prices are created out of laws and supply and demand and actual people studying with PhDs and so forth have written papers on this. So it's very interesting how there's so much to learn. There's actual big capitalists playing on World of Warcraft trying to accrue as much wealth as possible. And that again, that's mind blowing. However, that is not what we're talking about today. What we are talking about today is one sliver of that, that blew my mind even more when I found out about it. And that is how people invest in that game. Well, you would think, wait, that's so weird. You have this auction house, okay, you can buy and sell materials. You can, you can do some mining, get some ore, turn that into bars, sell those bars. Okay, sure, that's part of a typical MMO. How would you invest? There's no stock market in World of Warcraft, no. Indeed, there isn't. The only thing you can accrue is items. Beautiful items. There is such a thing as inflation. And so if you want to be a big, wealthy capitalist on World of Warcraft, you need to beat said inflation. Every single expansion, you get new quests and new rewards, which reward you with more gold than before. And so the value of gold does go down. Also by killing monsters and, and doing various other things, more gold is continuously added into the game. And apart from certain things like your gear breaking or buying something from a vendor, there isn't really enough ways to spend that gold. The developers actually had to put in items into the game to force those big capitalists to spend it on insane stuff like dinosaurs and whatever. So there is rampant inflation in that game. And if you are the big capitalist hoping to be rich in the world of Warcraft, how do you get rich? How do you beat that inflation? And again, I already kind of spoiled it. You invest into items. You invest more specifically into collectibles. And that is mind blowing. So what collectibles could possibly be in this game when anything can be gotten from, well, a raid, or, or, or a reward. So nothing's truly rare, right? Like it can just continuously be remade. There is this thing called the World of Warcraft trading card game, or well, there was, it's now very, very dead. And inside that game, you would sometimes get a very rare card with a scratch off code. So you would scratch it off and then that would give you an item in the game. That code would be unique, so it could not be reproduced. So there is actually a certain amount of items that are finite, that do not respawn, that cannot be recreated by extra people doing quests. The amount of these items is just the ones you got from the cards. And once those cards run out, and they mostly already have, that's the amount of items in the game, and that's it. Now, a few years ago, there was a point where some hackers found out how to duplicate some, and so for a little while, these items did become less rare. However, that was fixed, and you know, that supply also went down again. And so now, once again, these items are finite. So there are true collectibles inside World of Warcraft that do hold value and beat the inflation of the game purely because of how rare they are. They are special pets that don't do anything beyond looking good 
and special mounts that you can ride that don't do anything beyond looking good. And people with true wealth in that game, the actual rich people who first earned that through playing the game regularly, then playing the auction house, so being the capitalist essentially, now they had to figure out how. How do I keep this wealth? How do I protect this from being destroyed by the inflation? Because if you were rich a few expansions ago and then you bring that character over now, it doesn't matter, you're no longer rich. The inflation will have wiped you out. But not if you invested. You know, as a good house father, you invested into collectibles on World of Warcraft. Instead of putting your money, X million gold, on your bank, or into ores, which don't even beat inflation, you put it into the spectral tiger. And that spectral tiger's value grew over time. And then when you were like, well, I need to cash out, you sold it again, you would have consistently beaten inflation and then some. And so that has created a legitimate collectible market of investors in the game that continuously trade with each other and sell to each other because they know that the only legitimate store of value in the game is these collectibles. They are the baseline of how to beat the inflation and how to save your wealth in game and how to even change it across realms and so forth because of how finite and rare they are. And because they're prestigious, of course. There are people who just buy them and activate them because they want to start playing with them. And then they, again, go away from the population, never to be seen again. I myself have a spectral tiger. I, I think last expansion I could have sold it for 35 million gold, but instead I activated it because I wanted to ride it. I didn't want to be the capitalist, I just wanted to ride on my sweet tiger. But how mind-blowing is that? That very concept of a rare item being a store of value found itself into a virtual game, just a world, and it organically created itself out of nothing. Devs can write their rules and politicians can write their rules and, and anyone with power can write their rule, but regardless, markets will be recreated and stores of value will be required. And that just blew my mind. When I found out about how that worked, <sighs> crazy stuff. Hope you found this interesting. Hope you learned something from this. If you didn't, I'm sorry. But this blew my mind and I think it's a very, very important life lesson. Like, subscribe and I will see you soon. Ciao.